Hello and welcome to Bella Coconut Boutique on YouTube. If this is your first time joining me, welcome. I am so excited for you to join in this pattern today. If you have joined me in previous patterns and you're back for more, thank you so much for coming back to watch more patterns by me. So today we are going to be making this super cute candy corn keychain. Now, you do not have to do the keychain portion if you want just to make a mini candy corn. It is a complementary piece to my larger candy corn. But so if you do not want to make it as a keychain, you do not have to. You can simply stop at the top and leave it as is as a decoration. So in order to make this project, we are going to need the following materials. We're going to need size six bulky yarn. I am using a Loops and Threads brand from Michaels in Chenille Home Slim in white. I am using Premier Parfait Chunky in tangerine. I bought this one off of Amazon. You can get them at um, Joann's Fabrics as well or online at premieryarns.com. I am using Sweet Snuggles Light by Michaels Loops and Threads brand and this one is in the color Daffodil. I will also be using 10 millimeter, shake it down, 10 millimeter eyes. I have multiple eyes sizes so I just tend to write the sizes on the box in order to know the difference of the sizes. So that's why you'll see it written in Sharpie just so that I can differentiate between the eye sizes. So for this one, I use 10 millimeter eyes that I got on Amazon. If you choose to do it as a keychain, um, I had these long bead connectors and these lobster claw clasps. Again, I bought off of Amazon as well. Um, if you want any of the links to where I got the yarn, where I got the eyes, um, any of this, just let me know in the comments below and I will certainly post um, a link. You're gonna need a good pair of scissors, some needles to weave in your ends. For this one, I am using a K hook. It is a 6.5 millimeter hook. So if you find that you have a hook that does not have a letter, just look for the number. And then you're going to need polyfill fiber filling. Um, this is just the one that I got from Walmart. Um, you can also get it from Joann's Fabrics, Amazon, um, probably Target. You can buy it in most places, Michaels. Um, I just got mine at Walmart because they had the size bag that I was looking for. So those are the materials to start making this super sweet little candy corn. For this pattern we're going to start off with our yellow yarn and we're going to be working on both sides of the chain. So we're going to start with a slip stitch and we're going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're going to be working in the second chain from the hook. So this would be the first chain. This one is the second chain. We're going to work in this second chain from the hook. We're going to do two single crochets. Because we're working on both sides of the yarn, make sure to only go under one loop because we need the other loop for the back side. So now that we've done two single crochets in that second chain from the hook. We're going to do one single crochet in the next four stitches. And in the last chain, we're going to do four single crochets. So this will make a rounded oval. So one, two, three, and four. So now we're going to be working on the back side of the chain. You're going to see kind of where it makes like an X. That's where we're going to go under. So now that we did four single crochets in the last chain from um, the last chain at the front, we're going to do four crochet single crochets in the next four stitches till we reach the end. So one, two, three, 
and four. And now we're back to that first stitch that we did two single crochets in. Because we did four at this end, we need this end to equal four as well. So since we already did two, we're going to add two more. So that is round one, where we made an oval, which is going to be the base of our candy corn. So from here, you can do a multitude of things to mark your stitches. You can use a stitch marker, an actual stitch marker. Um, it came in a needle set that I got again on Amazon. Um, so if you want a link to those, you certainly um, can post a comment below and I will let you know where I got those. You can use the tail from the start. The only issue I have sometimes is that because this yarn is so fluffy, as I move the tail, bits of fluff come off. So sometimes I'll use the tail, sometimes I'll just count in my brain, sometimes I use um, a stitch marker, sometimes I use a bobby pin. Or I'll just get a, a piece of acrylic yarn um, that doesn't shed. So sometimes I'll just grab any leftover acrylic yarn. So we finished round one and now we have 16 stitches. So for rounds two, three, and four, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do a single crochet all the way around three rows. So rows two, three, and four are all going to be 16 single crochets. So we're only going to be working in the front loop. So when you look at your piece, you'll see you have a front loop and a back loop. Traditionally, when you do your stitches, you go under both loops. For this pattern, we're only going under the front loop piece. So just under this front part. And we're going to single crochet in the front loops only all the way around until we get back to our stitch marker. And at the end of round two, this round, we should have a total of 16 stitches. So we just did the first eight. There's stitch nine, 10. Again, front loops only, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So we just finished round two, 16 single crochets in the front loop only. You're going to repeat that two more times. So rounds three and four are gonna be the exact same. You're just going to single crochet around. It'll be 16 single crochets per round for rounds three and four in the front loop only. So if you wanna meet me back here, you can pause the video, finish your next two rounds, and then we'll get started on the next color. Do not finish the last stitch of round four yet. Um, I will show you because we will be switching colors. So if you wanna pause the video again, go ahead, and I will meet you back here when we're ending round four. All right, so we're coming up on the last two stitches of round four, and this is where we're going to be switching colors. So in your last stitch, you're going to start your single crochet. So you're gonna end, put it under the front loop, yarn over and pull through, but we're not gonna finish it off yet. We're going to snip our yellow yarn, and we are done with that guy. And now we're going to switch to our orange. We're gonna finish the stitch off in orange. So you're gonna put the orange over, pull through and finish it off. So what that does is it finishes your stitch in a full color. And then now your next one is going to start with orange. So for rounds five, six and seven, we are going to be working with the orange yarn and we're going to decrease then single crochet um, decrease and then single crochet around. So what I mean is that we're going to do two decreases each round in the next three rounds. 
So for this first round, round five, we're going to decrease. Now I like to do the invisible decrease. So I put my hook under the front loop only of the first stitch, wrap it around, put my hook through the front loop only of the second stitch, then I yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So that creates that decrease. If you choose to do a decrease a different way, feel free to do so. That's just how I like to do my decreases. And then I'm going to tuck my tails under with the next six stitches. So we did a decrease. Now we're going to single crochet in the next six stitches. And I'm just tucking my tails under as I'm going around. It says decrease one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to do that again. Decrease and then single crochet in the next six. Two, three, four, five. Six. So that brings us from 16 stitches down to 14. Now this next row we're going to do the exact same thing but instead of single crocheting in six we're going to single crochet in five. So we're going to decrease, single crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, five, then repeat, decrease, and single crochet in the next five. One, two, three, four, and five. Round seven, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to decrease and then go into four stitches. So we'll decrease, single crochet in the next four stitches, two, three, four, and we'll repeat that. We will decrease and single crochet in the next four. One, two, three, and four. Now this is the last stitch of the orange color. So we're going to not finish this last stitch. We're gonna trim off our yarn and we're going to move over to our white. So we'll finish the stitch in white. And we're going to do the same thing in this first round in white. Round eight, we are going to decrease and then single crochet in the first three stitches. So we're going to get under that loop, decrease and single crochet in three. One, two, and three. And again, I'm just tucking my tails under and crocheting them in. And then tuck them in. Okay, so from here is where I like to start adding my eyes before I get any closer to closing it. So I'm only going to do half of the row, half of round eight, and then I'm going to attach my eyes before I get any narrower in the opening. I'm going to take two eyes and two backs. Now because this is a small project, meaning it's not very thick, and the backs of these eyes, if you see, they're a bit sharp, I like to take a lighter and kind of burn them down. So we're going to put our eyes between round six and seven. So we have our base right here. So this was one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I tend to put my eyes between rounds six and seven. Now you can put them as far apart as you'd like, as close as you'd like, however you want your eyes to sit. So when you see them, they do stick out and I always get concerned that it's going to poke through the other side. So when I put my eyes on, I like to burn them and flatten the back. So I'm gonna put the backings on. You're gonna hear clicks when you push 
your eyes through. Might need to tuck your tails out of the way. All right, and so then what I do from here is I kind of burn my eyes on. So I will take my lighter and I will melt the back until it's lit and it should start to kind of bubble. And then I will push it flat with the side of my lighter. So now it's no longer this point, it's kind of a flat button and it's easier um, to keep inside the project and not be concerned that it's gonna poke through the other side. So you're gonna repeat, now be careful not to burn yourself. This part is optional, you do not have to melt yours if you do not want to. It's just what I prefer to do, especially on these narrower closed projects so that it doesn't stick through the other side. Now that my eyes are on, I'm going to tuck those silly little tails back in. There we go. And finish out round eight. So then I will do a decrease and single crochet in the last three stitches. And three. Okay. So then here we can start stuffing our little guy. We only have two more rounds left. You can also add a mouth on here, um, preferably whatever color you choose. I'm using black. You can use white. You can use orange. You can use brown. You can use purple. Whatever color you would like. You can use acrylic yarn too to make the mouth if you don't want to deal with the fuzz that kind of comes off um, with these yarns. I just don't have my black acrylic yarn with me, but it will be the same process. So I weave it under and go over a couple of stitches, kind of down one row. And then I tuck my yarn under and kind of create this loop to pull it back down. And I'll repeat it one more time kind of because otherwise it looks like it's a crooked V you can just tack it down again and then I put my yarn out the same hole I started now it kind of makes this nice little U smile and I will tie my ends off I like to do a box knot so I go over one direction and then I go over the other And then I'm just gonna pull, I'm gonna pull these tails into the body to get them away from the front. If you don't wanna put a mouth on, you do not have to. So don't feel like this is mandatory. You can add a mouth or you can leave it plain. You don't even have to add the eyes if you don't want. So I'm just tucking those tails in. I'm gonna snip off the extra and tuck it in. So now you can stuff your little guy and make it as firm as you want. You can stuff it so that it's really full and firm. You can stuff it so that it's squishy, however you want. All right, so stuff it as firm as you'd like and then we will start to close him up. I'm gonna take my marker out simply because I only have two rounds left. All right, there we go. So for round nine, I am going to single crochet front loops only in the eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And then for round, that's round nine. So for round 10, we're going to close it up. So we're going to decrease across those eight stitches. So we're going to decrease four times. All right. So 
we're gonna go I'm again I do the invisible decrease so here is one decrease two And if you want to stuff the tip just a little bit more before you close them all the way up, you certainly can, however you want. Again, this is your super cute little candy corn. You get to choose how you want to finish him. And the last decrease. Okay, and then I just go under the next stitch and slip stitch to fasten off cutting off any extra yarn so that I will weave that in and that is our sweet little candy corn so if you want to stop here you can just weave in your end and then use this as a decoration in any way you see fit again you do not have to have the face you could just have him plain or you can add the face um, but if you want to not make this into a keychain, you do not have to. For me, I am going to show you how to make it into a keychain if you'd like. Um, if you're not making the keychain, um, you can stop the video at this point and I appreciate your support. Um, I'm just going to show you how I weave in my ends first. So I like to go under, so I will always put my yarn under that same stitch I did the slip stitch in to fasten off. And then I just kind of go back and forth under the front loops of those four stitches that were our last decreases. And I pull, there we go. And now I'm just going to weave my yarn in. I like to go back and forth under several stitches across a row, kind of a bob and weave zigzag. So I will work them back and forth. And then on my last pass, once I go under a few, I tuck my needle down and in and pull it through. I pull a little tight so that the yarn will kind of shrink back into the body. I'm just going to peel off any leftover fuzzy bits. And there you go. There is the candy corn. Again, if you want to finish them off just like that, he's perfect as is. If you want to add it as a keychain, I will show you how I do it. So I've tried pulling the ball chain through some loops with a hook and I don't like, personally, I don't like how it works because I tend to accidentally grab stuffing with my hook and it pulls it out the stitches. So I try not to do it with the hook. Um, again, that's just personal preference. So what I do is I take a needle with a larger opening and I will just kind of tuck it across and then I put my ball chain in and pull it through. Like that. And now I, again, personal preference, I like to have my claw opening towards the back. So when I put the ball chain through the bottom of this, to attach it, oh goodness, Leah. I have the clasp opening facing the back. And I'll show you what I mean with that. So now when it's hanging, the claw opening is towards the back. So when you clip it onto something, this is the front. But that's it. That is how I make my mini candy corn keychain or just a mini candy corn with or without the face. 
If you like this video, please like and share. Please comment below if you want links for any of the items that I used during this project. Make sure that you subscribe and get notifications so that when I add more patterns like this one, this guy is going to be added later on as well. Um, but if you don't subscribe or sign up for notifications, you won't know that I've added a new pattern. So make sure you subscribe um, to this channel so that you get notified when more patterns are uploaded for you to follow. I appreciate each and every one of you for spending some time with me today to work on these super sweet little candy corn faces. And I can't wait to work on our next project together. Have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you so much again for joining me on Bella Coconut Boutique on YouTube. Bye, happy crafting.